What is up? In today's video, we're going over whether or not you should do a fellowship in ophthalmology or whether you should not. Let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name's Zach. I'm a first year ASOPers oculoplastic surgery fellow. So I do surgery around the eye socket, orbit, that kind of thing, eyelid surgery, cosmetic, all that good stuff, removing tumors from the eye. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead, subscribe to the channel down below. But in today's video, what I wanna go over is three reasons to do a fellowship in ophthalmology or three reasons not to. So to kind of help you guys decide if you're on the fence and you're not sure if you should do a fellowship, you're maybe thinking about it, but you're really not sure, which I find is normally the case with most residents that are thinking about doing a fellowship in ophthalmology is a lot of times they're just not sure if they really want to do one or exactly which one they want to do. So in this video, we're going to go into the three reasons to do it, three reasons not to do it. Let's start off with the three reasons to do it, but hang around to the end because I want to give you three reasons not to, and those are probably the more important reasons that you got to keep in mind. So the first reason in the category of why you should do a fellowship in ophthalmology is if you are planning to live somewhere in a highly saturated market. For example, if you want to live in a city, a densely populated city with a lot of ophthalmologists where it's gonna be more difficult to find a job as a comprehensive ophthalmologist, it can be to your benefit to have that extra subspecialty training. So if you were thinking maybe you wanted to be a cataract surgeon, but you wanna live in a very densely populated city where there's lots of ophthalmologists and the job market is just kind of tough, it can be to your advantage to maybe get that extra glaucoma training, have that cornea training, or something else to kind of supplement your resume so that it will make it easier for you to get a job. Now that said, I think you can probably always find your spot regardless. If you want to be comprehensive ophthalmology, you can find your niche or you can find a place for yourself in general comprehensive ophthalmology, even in those densely populated cities and those places where there's just tons of ophthalmologists already. You just have to be a little more willing to kind of make some sacrifices as opposed to if you were practicing somewhere more rural. So for example, maybe less compensation, maybe you have to drive a little bit, or maybe it's not the exact practice setup that you want. So is it mandatory to have fellowship or subspecialty training if you wanna live somewhere like that? No, of course not, but it can be to your advantage. So just something to consider. It's always a good idea to look at the potential market of the place where you're going to hopefully live and be practicing. So the second reason, and this is the most important reason in my opinion to actually pursue and do a fellowship, is just that you want to practice that particular subspecialty within ophthalmology. So if you really want to be a retina surgeon, that is the best reason to go and do a retina fellowship. If you want to be an oculoplastic surgeon, that is a perfect reason to do the fellowship. So of course, the desire to practice in that subspecialty is the main reason to do it. And a third reason to do a fellowship in ophthalmology, and this one is a bit more unfortunate, but it's because you actually need the training. So if for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable actually going out and practicing right out of residency, which can be the case if you come from a program that may be lower volume or maybe COVID kind of affected your amount of surgical exposure during residency or something, or for whatever reason, you just don't feel quite ready to go and actually practice right out of residency. It can be a reason to kind of supplement your training with a fellowship. Now, I was fortunate to get to do residency somewhere where we did so many cataract surgeries and had such high volume and such diverse pathology that I would have felt comfortable going out and doing comprehensive ophthalmology straight out of residency. But if that's not the case for you, that would be a reason to possibly do a little bit more training to kind of get that experience. But you have to be strategic in what you actually pick in that instance. All right, the three reasons that may push you away from actually pursuing a fellowship within ophthalmology would be as follows. So the first one is that you just love cataract surgery and you don't need anything else. You don't need to be doing retina surgery. You don't need to be doing tube shunts with glaucoma. You don't wanna do PKs. If you're gonna be happy going out, doing cataract surgery, practicing comprehensive ophthalmology, by all means, go do that. Do not feel that you have to go do extra training just because your friends are doing it, because your co-residents are doing it. Cataract surgery is a ton of fun and you can make a great living and have a great life being a comprehensive ophthalmologist. And I personally was very close to going straight into comprehensive ophthalmology. So if you love cataract surgery and you don't need more, that is a perfect reason to not do a fellowship. A second reason to not do a fellowship is if you are considering going and living somewhere more rural or where there are not many ophthalmologists around, Comprehensive ophthalmology in a rural location as opposed to a heavily densely populated city where there's lots of subspecialist ophthalmologists is practiced very differently. So 
Your comprehensive ophthalmologist out in the middle of nowhere where you're the only ophthalmologist may do all kinds of stuff like PRP, injections, you may be doing some glaucoma surgeries like shunts and things like that. You may be practicing some neuro-ophthalmology and doing some plastics procedures. You can be more of a true comprehensive ophthalmologist when there's not a lot of subspecialists around. So if you're planning to go live somewhere like that, you may actually get to do some of the subspecialty surgeries that you were technically trained in as a general ophthalmologist coming out of residency. Whereas if you're going to a big city where there's glaucoma, cornea, plastics, retina specialists, and all that, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to be doing that stuff as a comprehensive ophthalmologist. And you may not wanna be doing those kind of things anyway. So, but if you're planning to go practice somewhere like that, you may not actually need that subspecialty training. So again, this comes back to just kind of knowing the market of where you're thinking about living and considering whether the fellowship is gonna help you or it's just gonna be overkill in terms of what you're gonna need. The third reason to not do a fellowship in ophthalmology is that you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And what I mean by that is kind of, we get in this mindset in residency and in our medical training that we just must go to the next step. We did it from high school to college, college to medical school, medical school to residency, residency to fellowship. It really never ends sometimes. And then you get in academic medicine, you just keep climbing this ladder. So don't feel like that you just have to do the next level of training. You have to go for that next thing. There are a lot of type A personalities in medicine that just want to, kind of prove themselves and get to the next level of training and show that they can keep climbing that ladder of training, don't do it for that reason. Go be a general comprehensive ophthalmologist if cataract surgery is what you loved. If you don't need retina specialty training, if you don't need to be a plastic surgeon, go practice comprehensive ophthalmology. You'll have a great and fun life, trust me. All right guys, those are just a few considerations. There's a lot of other things you can consider with picking or not picking a fellowship, but those are a few things that you might consider if you are a resident and you are trying to decide if you should do a fellowship, Give those things a thought. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys like it, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'll see you guys in the next one.